Hi, Rami. What's the plan? Okay, okay. Hear me out. Beautiful Mexican supercar. Beautiful Mexican roads. Promoting the Horizon Festival. Do we need promoting? The festival seems to be doing okay. All right, all right. I'll find someone else. <laughs> That's not what I said. Of course I'll help you. I knew I could rely on you. Let's go. Let's get moving. Get some speed, then turn into the countryside. Really see what this car can do. Yeah, great speed. But let's see how you handle some corners. You want to tell me about the car, don't you? I thought you'd never ask. So, aviation. It stands for Vehicles of Ultra Lightweight and High Performance. It was started by two brothers, Guillermo and Iker Echeverria. The Bulo 5 is a track-focused supercar, designed and produced in Mexico, but tested and optimized in the UK. I even think I saw one at the festival when I was over there. We're driving the pre-production version of the Bull 5 RR, the even more track-focused version. Somehow, the designers reduced the weight by 65 kilos and increased the power to nearly 400 bhp. Then they lowered the engine by 50 millimeters to drop the center of gravity and improve cornering. Impressive. Perfect. Other things you can help out with, if it's not too much trouble. <laughs> You're never gonna let me live that down, are you? Call me. Today's episode of Mexican Automotive History with Ramiro is about the Baja 1000. You are very perceptive, my friend. This dune buggy was the first car to race here. Let's take it for a spin. The Baja 1000 is probably the most prestigious race held in Mexico. Do you know how it all started? I assume the Mize Max is something to do with it. Correct again. The Baja 1000 started as a very elaborate marketing campaign for the car you're driving. But let me start from the beginning. On the 22nd of March, 1962, Dave Eakins and Billy Robertson did the first real Baja run. They went from Tijuana to La Paz in 39 hours, 56 minutes, on new Honda CL72 Scrambler motorcycles. So they probably were a bit sore afterwards. They got a lot of media coverage, though. A year later, Meyer started to work on a prototype buggy he called Old Red in his garage in Newport Beach. It was based on the VW Beetle, and it paved the way for what we know as buggies. Cars that are built for off-roading, using the Beetle as a donor chassis. But I guess they wanted even more publicity because in April 1967, Myers decided to make an attempt at breaking Eakin's record. And it worked! Myers did it in 34 hours and 45 minutes, beating Eakin's for more than five hours. The rivalry was known as Buck Eats Bike in Baja. Sounds like something you did back in the UK, doesn't it? Manx became an overnight sensation as a result, and suddenly they were friendly races all across the Baja. It wasn't long before they realized they needed something more organized. And that was Mexican 1000. Guess who won the inaugural event? Mars Max? You're on fire today! Yes, in 27 hours and 38 minutes. The official race was 100 miles shorter than the original route, but it's still impressive. The Mexican 1000 was later renamed to the Baja 1000 and is run to this day. In 200 yards, turn left.
100 yards. Turn left. I love that story. My abuela used to tell it to me at least once a year. Oh, right. I get it now. To be honest, though, it was me who needed your help, not Papa Fernando. <laughs> I can't fault that logic. Who are the other races? You know them. It's the Born Fast crew. They're raring to go. Toy is eager. But this isn't really a street race. There's no check. Points. Just the finish line. So keep to the route and get there first. It's hard to overstate the effect that the Beetle had when it arrived in Mexico in 1954. Before that, all we had were these huge American cars. So this new European style car... ...with its shape and light chassis and those adorable headlights and an engine that anyone with a tractor could fix was... Well, a complete game changer. They were so exciting that they were displayed at the Ciudad Universitaria in Mexico City. And there were lines to come and see this new car. Production of the Beatles started in Mexico soon after seven of them finished the Carrera Panamericana. Before that, people were a bit worried about reliability, you see. We Mexicans love a good-looking car. But a car that can do work is better. The Panamericana convinced us, and in 61, Automex had assembled 250 of them. By 62, the first plant had... That is a great car. Probably the most iconic car in all of Mexico. Ay, es increíble que un auto tan pequeño deje un vacío tan grande. Adios, Sedan. Thanks. I'll call you when I've got that next one ready. I have two cars here, a first-generation Volkswagen and a seventh-generation Volkswagen Golf, made in Mexico for almost half a century. Sadly, they stopped building them in 2021, but we can still race them. What do you say? To make it fair, I will give you a chance to make an informed choice. Let's go for a test drive, and I've got lots to tell you about Volkswagen Mexico. Volkswagen Mexico headquarters. Shall we jump 40 years in the future and try the seventh generation? The seventh generation of the Golf first appeared in 2012. All right, all right. Enough driving around. Let's go head to head, after you've had a chance to rest. <laughs> I 
I hope you know some shortcuts. See you at the finish line. Don't make me wait for too long. I'm actually surprised the first generation still holds up. I'm sure you didn't cheat. That's Ram. I'll pick you up. <laughs> I hope you know some shortcuts. What a race! The difference 40 years makes! That's the old wolf. <laughs> no, no! That's an old truck! The wolf is waiting for us at the swamp. Haley asked us to clear some debris. And I've got just the car. But we need to get there first. Of course! Who do you think I am? Now, let me introduce you to the fourth Lobo. This car is more your style. Now that's a hecking good wolf. We call it Lobo here. Marketing in this country is outstanding. Let's get to work. See all that brush and stuff? Clear it out. Job's done, and the scratches will buff right out. Thanks for the help. Now I just need to get my abuelo's old F-100 back to the garage. Ah, 
I know you've got one of these. Somehow. So you know a little bit about what you're in for. Let's go! Let's take this down to the beach. Stick it in AWD if you like. There's some nice curves up ahead. Calm down. I know you like to go fast. I had a big breakfast. This is 2021's EV of the year. And it was up against things like the Taycan and the e-tron and the Recharge. It set three Guinness World Records, and it's inspired by the beautiful original Mac 1. And I'm telling you all of this because the Mac E was built right here in Mexico at Waltitlan Assembly. Waltitlan Assembly has been building cars since the 60s and more than 2.0 rear wheel drive at the touch of a button and there we go sunrise over the sea beautiful but we're not done there's one more thing to look at I'll let you know as soon as I have, uh, found it. Now, what do you mean, found? <laughs> In a barn, of course. And of course it's racing. Come meet me at Guanajuato. This beauty got her name from the Carrera Panamericana. The races don't run anymore, but who can blame us if we take it out one more time? Right? Let's see what this car can do. There's Jamin. Guess he wanted one last race. Let's do this! Porsche Carrera got its name thanks to Hans Hermann, who won the small sports cars category in 1954. He drove the Porsche 550 Spider and came third overall. He was sick before the race, and his tires came off at the start. He really pulled through against the odds. 
Porsche had six cars competing in 1954, and all of them made it through the end. A lot of others didn't, let me tell you. Enjoying yourself, are you? Yeah, I kind of had a feeling you were. 1954 was the last year the original Carrera Panamericana took place. But it gave us the most famous Porsche model, the Carrera you're driving right now. The Carrera RS 2.7 was the first production street racing 911. It was built on the 911S 2.4. the sports you could buy at the time, and a popular choice in the later Carrera Panamericana races. The race was revived in 1988 and ran to 2016, staying true to the original races with high-speed road stages. The routes for the race were carefully selected every year by planning committee and local government to ensure they were race-worthy and that they can be closed up for two hours. You could almost say they've been preparing for the festival for a very long time. This is Jamin's exit. It's been fun, my friend. Take care. Looking forward to seeing what you can do out there. Have fun now, yeah? Great race. Almost like we did a little Panamericana with a friend. Anyways, hope you had fun with this little stroll through cars hechos in Mexico. It was great. And let me know if you uh, find any other cars like that. <laughs>